after, uh, uh, after ablation. There's the expression of early genes, but then if you look five days after, the expression of these early genes is kind of kind of coming back towards normal, and, and it's then the expression of genes expressed at later stages in neuronal development, such as AC ASCL1A, or genes of some of the pathways here, sonic, hedgehog, uh, that are uh, being increased. Okay, so when Raphael and Kang did the chemogenetic ablation, the biggest effect that they saw was in the olfactory bulb. They also saw decreases in the number of neurons in other parts of the brain, of the adult brain. Uh, but because they had seen these big increases uh, in uh, the olfactory bulb, they thought, okay, we're going to check whether uh, the olfaction in the fish is being affected. So in that, they, they use a particular test in which the fish has the ability to swim in a tank that is divided into two parts. And in one part of the tank, you can administer a chemical that will either uh, be attractive to the fish or repulsive to the fish and see if the fish, as soon as you've administered this chemical, will have a tendency to go towards the compartment where you added the compound if it's attractive or to avoid that particular compartment if the compound is repulsive. And this is the experiments here. The, the, there are only data at this stage uh, for seven days after the metronidazole treat, the end of the metronidazole treatment, and 45 days uh, later on. And we see seven days after treatment that there's a big difference between the metronidazole treated fish and the controls. But if you look 45 days after the end of the treatment, the, the, the fish respond, the controls and the uh, chemo genetically ablated fish respond in a similar way, okay? Um, I'm not showing these data today, but Raphael also looked at locomotion. <clears throat> Didn't see much of an impact. He also looked at anxiety behavior, and anxiety is one of the other things that is seen in Parkinsonian patients, and they saw a change in the anxiety in the fish that had been treated uh, with metronidazole. Okay, so in summary, what I've shown you in this last part of the talk and, uh, is that uh, chemogenetic ablation using the nitroreductase metronidazole system can result in the ablation of dopaminergic neurons, and this will affect locomotion, at least in the embryos and the early larvae, and in olfaction if you're uh, studying adults. And when we did this experiment in adults, there was an increased production of dopaminergic neurons in response to ablation, uh, and this increased response and increased synthesis or production of dopaminergic neurons was a transient, a temporary response uh, from the fish. So this is a picture of our group taken last summer. Uh, here I'm listing the individuals who are participating in the uh, in the Parkinson's projects, and there are other students and postdocs who are participating in other projects in the lab. Some students had the time to show you uh, the kind of uh, research that they have been doing. Some people, I did not uh, have the time to talk about that today. And I also would like to acknowledge you know, the, the funding sources, the Canadian consuls, and uh, the Parkinson's Society uh, uh, of Ottawa. And I'll gladly uh, entertain questions. There are questions. If I can start, Mark, two questions. One about neuroanatomy and the evolution. Uh, so there is a the group I heard. I met somebody from the group of Luis Puelles arguing yes. that yeah. mesencephalic mesencephalic uh, midbrain dopaminergic neurons are not that missing, completely missing okay. in zebrafish. What's your view about that? And another question concerning the mechanisms replacing ablated dopaminergic neurons in larvae and adults, yeah. whether there are similarities in this mechanism. Okay. Okay. 
So the first one, I, 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 I'm a terrible neuroanatomist, and you're compare, you're trying to compare me with one of the great, this great groups. ones. Louis Clay, Clay is, is the great. I can't comment. Okay. Uh, several approaches have been used uh, in zebrafish to try to see the correspondence and what are the pathways. So. The pioneering work in this particular aspect was done by Mario Bulliman, and they, from their work, where they do, you know, entero, retrograde labeling, whatever, and they, they saw that there were pathways that led from the ventral diencephalon to the telencephalon. Mm -hmm. So this could be analogous to what we see in mammals, okay? Then the group of Wolfgang Driva had done some sort of a connectome for the connectome analysis, so all the connections that involve dopaminergic neurons. And in his opinion, from that paper uh, that came out, you know, about 10 years after the work from Vuliman, uh, he saw that it was the telencephalon itself, okay? And then, I, I, I can't comment okay, uh, on this. Then the second question, the, the com when we're comparing uh, what's happening in embryos and larvae and what is happening in neurons. So to make things simple, we say fish, you know, continue to make new neurons all the time. But in a proportional way, they are probably making more neurons compared to the total number of cells when they're embryos and larvae than they are uh, in adults. I've never really seen numbers. Maybe they exist. Maybe I, I don't know. Okay, but one presumably one way to answer that would be that in the embryos and larvae, there's so much production of new neurons that any response of the fish to some sort of injury or bad treatment would be masked by by this. Whereas in adults, because this production is relatively smaller not in absolute numbers, but in relative numbers compared to the mm -hmm. size and compared to the number of cells in the head of the fish, that maybe it would be easier to see them. That, but that, that's a very mm -hmm. simplistic explanation, but that's the best I have. Thank you. One. Thank you for a very interesting talk. <laughs> I'm not a neurobiologist, but I was just curious about the fact that uh, the olfactory lobe was uh, so strongly targeted and uh, not the rest of uh, the brain. I mean, were, were you surprised when you, or is this normal, or can you comment on this? <laughs> yeah, I can comment on this. Unfortunately, uh, we're still puzzled. So at the beginning, because metronidazole is not too, too expensive, what we were doing is we were administering metronidazole by just putting it into the tank of the adult fish. In the embryos, you know, they swim in petri dishes, so the volumes are small, so it's never really a big issue unless the compound is very, very, very expensive. And the adults, uh, because they swim in big tanks, if you want to dissolve the compound in the big tank, uh, it needs to be cheap, but metronidazole was not too expensive, so we put it in the tank. Okay. So again, a simplistic explanation was that this was the access, the access of the drug towards, we, we don't have an, an easy way to measure the levels of the pro-drug, metronidazole, in all the parts of the fish, of the brain. But be, maybe because the olfactory um, bulb was closed, that's where it is. So I told the guys, say, okay, let's try it using intraperitoneal injection. So this way it's going to be different, and then it's going to be as difficult to reach the olfactory bulbs as it is to reach the telencephalon, for instance. Unfortunately, I didn't show those results, but it seemed that the results were the same. So we're still puzzled by that one. Okay. Other possible explanation is that, again, simplistic one is there's a lot of neurons there, and because there's an uh, olfactory bulb, and because there's a lot of neurons, it's easier to see when something's happening. But I don't know. Can I follow up on that? Yeah. Uh, what about in humans? I mean, is, is there an, any analogy? Okay. In, uh, okay. In Again, I'm going to stretch things, stretch things out. A okay. So there are dopaminergic neurons in the brain, and I'm not a clinician. I'm not. A, I'm a physician. Okay. But what I hear is one of the earliest signs of Parkinson's disease is loss of olfaction. Okay, so you start losing your sense of smell uh, before you develop 
for instance, local motor dis dysfunctions. So there are dopaminergic neurons in the olfactory also systems, but it, and they're important. But but again, it's it, also in Alzheimer's. No, uh, I don't know. I, 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 honestly, I don't know. I, I didn't know. Yeah. Yes. I was interested in your approach in human cells, which is something new to me. Even I've heard of many, like killer rat. Uh, yeah. We work on cilia, so we have okay. a lot of tools. But I have never heard about that. Can you tell something more about the how cells die? What is the natural rate, the, the reductors? Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Because, uh, this is also important for the uh, for understanding your human. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, in the slide, I show that it's it develop it, it develops uh, the metronidazole is turned by nitroreductase and a I would not say intercalating agent in the DNA. Okay. People, I think, have worked this out. Unfortunately, I don't know the answer how it works precisely at the molecular level. What I can tell you is that this method was developed in zebrafish about 15 years ago. The first, one of the first successes was to kill the beta cells in the pancreas or in the pancreas in the zebrafish as a model for uh, diabetes, and that worked well. People are uh, using that to have laid a large number of cells uh, in various parts of the body. We were kind of concerned at the beginning that the, the nervous system would be harder to hit, maybe because of uh, drug distribution issues, but this seems to be working. Mind you, we're never getting 100% loss of these neurons. And again, it could be just that the fish are making so many, okay, that we are never going to get 100%, or it could be that the, 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 the availability of the prodrug is such that we're not able to kill everybody. Uh, so we don't know the answer for that. But in other systems, in the zebrafish, there has been a lot of success. So you're thinking about apoptotic death, something like that? Yeah, so again, I think it's apoptotic death, okay? But I, I must confess, I didn't really look into the, the great details of the, uh, of the system. And I'm trying to figure out in which species this was, because zebrafish is not the first one where nitro reductase was tested. But I'm trying to figure out, but I'm having a blank. I don't think it's C. elegans, but maybe uh, amphibians? Drosophila? Okay, okay. Could be, I don't know. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.